My omakase is a reflection of part of who I am as a person. My identity as a Korean American making sushi was really only in my own head. There is an initial insecurity, but it's a craft. Hi, welcome. This is a watari gani, swimmer crab, from Miyagi Prefecture. Kanjang ejang is a traditional Korean delicacy. It's a soy marinated preserved raw crab. Main blue pigment is in its legs. So we have the female, which has many spots, versus the male, which is a little more dull on the top of a shell. During the season, male watarigani is three times sweeter than the female. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the meat of the male. And of course the female has beautiful, uh, very luscious fatty roe. We're gonna do a little marriage between the husband and wife. It's eaten on a very special occasion at fine dining restaurants and always served as a celebration. Kejang nigiri is not traditional Japanese sushi at all. Two of my favorite cuisines is Korean and Japanese. I've always wanted to find a way that it can be connected together. To me, they're two of the most interesting and beautiful cuisines. Chamisu original, never fresh original. Based on how strong or how potent you make your marinade will determine how many days it should be preserved. I do know what's inside of this, but I promised my mom I won't tell anyone, so that's, that's my secret. It smells a lot like marinated garlic, soy sauce, and citrus, and you're gonna get this hint of sweetness that's quite nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. First thing, I'm gonna remove the roe. It has a very similar pigment as uni, actually, like a bafun Hokkaido uni. And the flavor is actually very similar, but I would say the roe of the swimmer crab is a lot more briny. The way that you eat this, or the way you remove its meat, shows you a lot about if you've had this before or if you haven't. You gotta start from the base of the legs. You gotta squeeze to the center and you can see the meat come out, naturally. And then you would actually take a bite and it'd be just a mouthgasm. I love all forms of kejang, but this kanjang kejang I would say is one of those meals that I wouldn't mind having for the last meal of my life. This is the Aurika sword fin squid. This is from Kumamoto, Japan. It is something that is hard to find very fresh in the States. What I'm doing right now is removing the fin of the squid skin off. The reason why it's called swordfin squid is because when you remove its spine, it's literally shaped like a sword, like a long, clear sword. This is what I fight my enemies with. The Aurica is, is extremely one of the top of the food chain squids. Oh, I see a little... Oh, I think this is the uh, Nodoguro. Baby. It's a baby no Nodoguro. The aurica is quite challenging because it's quite thick, it's quite firm, and it takes a lot of scoring or shaving or slicing to even create one piece of sushi. I would say, you know, the texture is something that most people look forward to with this. After your first bite, there is a bit of creaminess. 
This is the shark skin flounder uh, from Hokkaido, Japan. You can hear the sound. If I didn't tell you it wasn't a flounder, you'd probably think it was some sort of jackfish. What makes it so unique is the fact that this flounder is so fatty. Here you can see like its liver here. No, oh, it's so sad, it's broken. But you can see the fattiness of the liver. You know, most flounders are extremely lean, but you can see this, this is pretty much almost like ankimo. Ebi oboro is a sweet shrimp crumble. It's something that was invented during the Edo, Ma Edo period, which is around the 1800s. It's a time in Japan where things were flourishing. Uh, the economy was booming, um, sushi was invented because the people were too busy making money or, or working, so we needed people to create food for them on the go. At the time, sushi had a lot more intense flavors then. You had to have things that sort of balance the intensity or the vinegar flavor of sushi. This is my, my father. <laughs> Graced us with his presence. My father first opened up Kura when I was about 14. You know, the actual real, the toughest work is actually holding this. So he actually has the hardest job. I'm inspector. How to make it good? <laughs> Not good, I just take a holiday. The reason why my father got into Japanese food was because he just thought it was badass. <laughs> Looking good? Coming up, very good. When he opened, it was all classically trained Japanese chefs. It's like mochi. My drive and my, my hunger for this, this reconnection with what I felt when I was 14, working with my father at, with his chefs here. It really drove me to go and train in Japan and take that step of experiencing and immersing myself in the culture. For me, it's like, because I'm, a, I'm more of the new generation, uh, it's sort of paying homage to uh, the originating techniques of uh, Edomai style sushi. As you can tell, it's quite dry and coarse. Uh, no big lumpy parts. I think it's very important to share this and keep this tradition going. Ebioboro pairs really well with a lot of hikarimono. Ebioboro is really perfectly matched with kasugodai and koada, which is shiny fish. Japanese sardine. The main difference between training in Japan and training at Noma, Japan was more about preserving the cultural tradition. Noma, it's not only about preserving what's in their terroir, but also to be more pushing the boundary with innovation. I took over as head chef of my father's restaurant when I was 28 years old. My father, as the years have gone, he's become more of a friend and someone that I can even just be buddies with, but also someone that I've, I learned so much from. Not only about sushi or running a restaurant, but also about being a good man, a good father. And I was so encouraged to go to Japan and when I shared to them how insecure I might have been about being a Korean making Japanese food, using traditional Japanese techniques, it was not even an idea to them. They were so open and so generous with their knowledge. Husband and wife, kanjang gejang, male meat with female roe. Nishigakigai, white cockle clam. The major key factors that really drove me to this point and still drives me to this day is curiosity. 
and wanting to be better than my previous generation. I'm super competitive. Aurika, sword fin squid. I love to study the old school techniques and even my father's generation of what was trendy at the time. The idea of omakase is to trust the chef. Kohada with ebi oboro. I am me and that's who I show. And that's what I'll give you. So I think authenticity is to be yourself. And that's the most honest thing and the best thing you can do.